Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Welcome, everyone, YouTube and otherwise, um, to the fifth episode of the Earth to Mars podcast. I'm joined with my good friend, the Hollywood Banjo, a.k.a. Banjo Plays Banjo, a.k.a. Banjo, a.k.a. T, capital T. Um, good friend of mine, great entertainer, great commentator, great everything. And this is going to be a really interesting special episode because... We're gonna talk about something really important and I wanted to make sure I gave Banjo the platform to talk about it today, um, cause it happened literally today, about something that happened to him in his neighborhood. And I mean, you know, without further ado, I guess T could start us off, talk about a little what happened. Yeah, man. Um, first off, you know, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Like you said, like we both said it's been a long time coming. I'm happy to finally be on the Mars Bars podcast, man. Y'all make sure y'all like, Subscribe, give this man a follow because you know, he does everything a good host is like supposed to do. He's entertaining, he's cordial, he's not fucking racist, which is par for the course of what happened to me today. So, um, I woke up this morning, and I'm just like, all right, I'm about to get up, I'm gonna go work, right? And then I walk outside, and I'm literally about to hop in my car and dip and just head to work. And something was in my windshield, so I picked this up, and it was this, like, uh, this note that said, you know, in, like, 16-point font, like, white power, blood on the soil, blood on the soil, Jews will not replace us, blacks will not replace us, Mexicans will not replace us, stand up, all my men and women of the Aryan Brotherhood. I'm sitting here reading this shit, and I'm just like, it's 9.50 a.m. Why are y'all doing this to me? So I took the shit off my windshield, crumpled it up, balled it up, threw, threw it out. I'm just like, Jesus, bro. I take a, a roundabout, you know, around the neighborhood because I used, I, I used the cul-de-sac to get myself on the other side of the street so I can leave. And... More of these same notes were on, like, other cars, too, in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? So, I'm thinking in my head, I'm just like, okay, this dude's out here in Cyprus, so let me go ahead and fucking put this shit on Facebook, put this shit on Twitter, so I can, like, let people know, like, hey, there's actually, uh, like, this dude out here putting racist propaganda in neighborhoods. Yep. Which which especially in like in this in this day, right? This 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 2020 period, in 2020 it's just like a lot of shit is like racially charged right now, right? Yeah. You would you probably would never see this shit in the hood. I'm going to be real with you. But in the suburbs they brave as fuck out here with that shit. They're super like, they're super like, oh, well, I can exercise my first amendment right. And I could just place, play, place this here on the, like, this dude had some type of like pseudo YouTube video about how he went around and did this shit on our cars. Yeah, I saw the, the I saw the, I saw the YouTube video. And it was just wild. Like, mm -hmm. so like, I'm just kind of just like. That happened this morning. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's just like, I'm I'm floored because like, it freaks me out. It freaks out my roommates. It freaks out like the, the dude that who, who, whose house this is, you know what I'm saying? It just makes us all like nervous because this is usually like the first step to some, to some other foul stuff that could happen out of a situation like this. Right. So because of this, it's like now this weekend we getting cameras installed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I when I posted when I posted that video, a bunch of people are telling me to get a gun. Yeah, a lot of people in the tweets. You know Arm saying? yourself. Be safe. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, bro, like, we live out in here in the suburbs for this shit to not go down. But it's just like people like that racist dude. Like he just felt the need to, like, I don't, you know, it's just I can't, I can't. I can't explain racism, right? Mm -hmm. I can't explain racism to like 
and I can't see I, I just I can't see people how how you can defend something like the Confederacy when the country that you're in fought to destroy it. Mm. I can't see something like white power and Aryan Brotherhood and Nazism when we had a whole world war. Yeah. And people in America fought in that world war to make sure that that shit was not going down anymore. But y'all, y'all want this, y'all want this, like, but this idea that, like, that white people are superior, like, y'all gotta let that shit go to all you racists out there. Yeah. Y'all just gotta, y'all, y'all have to, y'all gotta, y'all gotta move past this shit, bro. Like, racism has, racism has no place in, in America. It just doesn't. It shouldn't have any place in America, bro. Like, we... We literally fought to 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 make this to make America like you know as this free country. and for everyone that comes here, all the different people, nationalities, creeds, everything. Like we like they fought to 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 preserve like you know what I'm saying to make sure that you know you have the freedom of speech and to protect your amendment rights. But y'all don't give a fuck. But it's okay. The cool kids is back. Congrats. Yeah. The cool kids is back, bro. Like, we we know we know the truth, bro. Y'all y'all claim to hate all these nationalities, but you racist white people want to take from other cultures, bro. I get it. Right. I mean, like you look the, at a lot of culture cool, today. The cool, yeah. kids, the cool kids is back, bro. Like, I get it, bro. Don't worry, we got some dance tracks for y'all. The black people have some dance tracks for y'all. Don't worry about it, man. We got some more hit raps for y'all. We got some more dances, some more movies y'all can take. We got y'all, bro. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. But if you happen to be racist, go fuck yourself. And that's real. Yeah. You can go right there. You can go right the fucking hell. Yeah. Right? It's just so crazy. I, I Like, all the stuff that's happening right now, and to have this happen, it's like, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane. It, it reminds people why there's so much like activism so many protests and so much awareness that's being spread right now because people like this exist now in 2020 in maybe our fucking neighborhoods definitely i guess in our neighborhoods and that's that's the freaky thing about this man it's just like this is this isn't something that you play with like kids live out here mm mm-hmm. mhm you know what i'm saying whole yeah. families live out here you can't be just putting up racist propaganda like this shit is all good I appreciate I appreciate everybody who was who was coming to my support, who was raising awareness about the situation in in this community in Cyprus, but like it just it just it's it's something that just has to be addressed in my opinion, and 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 I'm really thankful that you know I had people come to my aid, yeah, and like and like it's just like all these people trying to like hit me with the whole like. All lives matter. Like racism doesn't exist. Yeah, we started the stream, and someone came in and said, "White people, white white lives matter." We started the stream. We started the stream like that, bro. And yeah. It's just like y'all y'all need to chill the fuck out. Like, just it's not. This isn't something that you play with, man. It just isn't. Like, like very fucking, ignorant. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just ignorant. And this is the question you gotta ask yourself, right? We live in the information age, right? So in 2020, are you choosing to be ignorant? Or are you truly ignorant to what is going on? It's the question that some people need to ask yourself. Don't argue with me. Argue with the man in the mirror. Hmm. Don't, don't do that. Because, like, we, we, you can get whole... I learned how to change my oil off YouTube. Yeah. You can definitely learn about racism. And what that does to people. But I mean, like I said, if you with that, that white lives matter, all lives matter, racism doesn't ex- exist, you can go fuck yourself too. Let yeah. me be the example that that's a startling be. reminder. Crazy. Let me let me let 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 what happened to me today be a reminder that that shit is not is it's not fake, it's real. No. Now for me, I know it's real. Yeah. This is just because I'm black. This is just shit that happens all the fucking time. Mm. It happens all the time. But to everybody else who seems disillusioned for some reason or 
if they're disillusioned, the shit ain't the shit ain't fake. The shit is not a game. It's real. So be an ally, right? Um. Understand racism. Understand that it comes from a place of hate. Yeah. And then don't be afraid to like, you know, support, you know, your brothers and sisters who just who aren't not only black, but like, you know, Latino, Asian, you know what I'm saying? Like things of that nature, right? Yeah, it's well, just it's to, just it's just crazy too. Um, to to what you're saying about the the information age, just like yeah, if you're gonna be a racist as well, like don't don't have your information online. Don't be public. Like I I don't understand how you can do a blatant act of racism and not only post on Facebook and stuff, but also post it on YouTube. It's like I'm not gonna I'm not, I, I, I I'm not gonna I, I don't want to start any like um you know pitchfork crazy nonsense, but we could talk about the fact that. He filmed this, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Look, all I'm, all I'm saying is that, like, okay, there was that, like, that one instance in, like, I think it was earlier this year before the summer started, like, he was in May or April, right, where celebrities were getting canceled left and right mm. because they were, like, saying just, like, outland not, not, some, not just celebrities, but just people. There was that girl who was in Georgia – who uh made that racist TikTok? Yes, she got, she I got, yeah. She got doxxed. Yep. She got she got her information found out about it. She yep. she got kicked out of all those schools that she was applying to. Yeah, it was she a girl a girl and like her boyfriend or something. They made that super racist TikTok of like the water and the yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here. I'm just like, first off, you you really goofing because you did that in next in Atlanta, which is literally the closest thing, one of the closest things to Wakanda. <laughs> I don't know why you decided to do that over there. And two, it's just like, dog, like, dog, like, this is, this is the internet. This is the information age. We, they're going to find out about you. People are going to see they're that. Gonna, they're going to know. Like, it's, and it's crazy because, like, people walk around and, like, oh, I'm in my own little bubble. Like, no, dog. Like, it's literally, like, you do want, you do a racist thing and then, boom, like, you, you out of there. They'll put your they'll put your name on Twitter, make make this make this girl famous, and then you're done. You're done. And that shit goes viral in minutes. And then it's just like all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, uh, my my scholarship, my, yeah. my I, I locked my Instagram Instagram. page. Yeah. All that, bro. What's what's happening to me? I don't know why why is my life ruined? I, all I was was racist. Like, like come on, bro. Like blatantly racist in public. Yeah, that's all. That's all that happened. Like it, it was just a joke. Nah, nah. You don't get the no. Nah, you don't get the feign ignorance in, in in the face of this, bro. You out of there. Yeah, so. you don't film a TikTok. You know how long it takes to film a TikTok? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't lie to yourself, bro. But that's what happened to me. Like, we're taking, we're taking measures to like make sure that me and my roommates and safe. everything else are just safe. And yeah, I think it's very important that like we keep this going, and we just, especially in my community, in the cybers community, that we just spread awareness of this and make sure that this is going round and round, and make sure that you know we keep ourselves safe because it looks like, per his you know Facebook, Facebook profile is like this dude don't care, and he's probably not gonna stop. He's probably just starting some movement. Flagrant racist. Like, yeah, but it's just like the last thing I want is for anyone to get hurt it's the last thing i want right it's it's yeah. it's it's terrible and it was insane to me like i i was kind of watching the thread a little bit like and when i tuned in and i saw like people found like his like that he had posted it because someone was like oh you know this seems kind of like whatever and someone's like no like here's a video of the person putting the exact flyer on two cars and it's like Yo, like, <laughs> it's just like I don't know. Yeah, the Reddit so detectives were on your side today, or not? The, I mean, the Twitter detectives, like, yo, that was insane. Yeah, they were. They was. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, bro, we're just we're just gonna dox that man. Easy, easy, and they <laughs> kind of did. So now we can be on the lookout for this dude. And yeah, you know what I'm saying. If if the HOA, I hope the HOA, and I hope you know. Mm. I hope the HOA can like do something about this. I'm not saying go out there and look for the dude, but it would put me at ease if 
are you know they looked into it or if they were like okay hey we're gonna try to have like some cop like patrolled or something or you know hey maybe this person actually does live in this hoa because they have hoas have a list of everyone who lives in the whatever in the neighborhood stuff so it's like oh okay you know uh we think this race has committed this you know whatever whatever yeah and hopefully you know they just end up doing something about it and i hope so but you know it really sucks when shit like this happen like a race is Something as racist as this happened. It, it, there's been, of course, little like jabs of, you know what I'm saying, hmm. like discrimination here and here and there. But I haven't had racist shit like this happen to me since like, since before I left Kansas, where I'm from. Like that's like that's part of the reason why like my mom got me and my brother up out of there in Kansas hmm. because she, cause she was just like. This is racist, and this is just a terrible environment. I don't want y'all here. But now, I mean, I've been dealing with it all my life. And, I mean, being a black dude, this is just some of the shit we have to endure, which which, which sucks. It's very, very terrible. I don't wish this upon anybody. Right. Because it just makes everybody not only feel uncomfortable, but feel pressure to fear for their safety and that's not cool right because now you have to think okay it's people like this don't want people that look like me around and they think that we're like dirt it's just not cool man it's not but like i said we'll find wolf we have a a way of dealing with it yeah and you know education i'll say that education and educating yourself and it's not and it's not hard you live in the information age. Find a way. Don't make it. Don't make an excuse. You know. Oh, crazy. It's crazy. You woke up to this this morning. Yeah. <sighs> I woke up excited for the Mars Bars podcast. I didn't know this shit was gonna be in it. It's wild. But now we can talk about you know everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, besides uh, experiencing racism in your life, uh, banjo. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no um yeah no so uh, yeah i mean i I'm, I'm glad that we talked about it i'm glad it's very important uh, it's a very important thing to bring up and i'm glad that you could speak your piece about it and um you know obviously i'll put links at least to your tweets and stuff into the video for everyone to at least see and get a first-hand look at what all happened um yeah but i mean so part of the reason why i've been super excited to have um banjo on is because i've gotten to know him through like actually like working at events and stuff with him and, and it's so interesting because i i never actually had, had met you in person right but i had known that you were like the you know super popular like super you know a, a commentator that does a lot of events and stuff like i knew you through commentary yeah. through like twitter and facebook and all that and i was like okay i knew that because i wasn't super involved in you know the smash 4 smash ultimate scene but I knew that you were really good, you and um, Joey. And so I was like, okay. And that's when I like had reached out to y'all to, for, to come work for Anime Mitsuri, right? So yeah. Anime Mitsuri of last year, I believe. Yeah, of what, 2019. Yeah, of last year. Because I had known that you guys were so good. And so that was, I was just like, I'm pretty sure these guys are pretty freaking good. And we need someone for like this. So let me reach out. And I'm really, really glad that I did because, it, you know, it ended up that you two were like, you know, stand up great freaking guys and ended up, we ended up being like really good friends after that. So I'm really excited yeah. about that. Yeah. But um, could you talk a little bit about kind of like how, like, I mean, wherever you want to begin, but it was, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I only knew y'all through commentary. Yeah. Um, like I, I started commentary, like, I, and I always have this pin for my Facebook post. I started commentary. It was like, 2000, 2000, 2000, my dumb ass. It was 20, it was 2014, right? And mm-hmm. I was just thinking, I was, and in my head, I was like, hey, man, <laughs> Smash Brothers, Smash 4? Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, it's not, it's, the game wasn't hard. I was like, game ain't hard, but I'm kind of ass. <laughs> what I will do, I'll, I'll, I'll commentate this game because that's something that I've wanted to be involved in for like a super long time. Okay. Even before I got, even before I got in the video game scenes, right? It was just like commentary was this thing that was there, and I was just exposed to it, and I finally found like an outlet to be like, oh shit, I can pursue my dream this way. Because I remember I was like, now I can talk about like two thousand. <laughs> it was like two thousand, two thousand four, two thousand two. 
or three or one, one of those. Uh, I was at my grandma my house, and she had that digital cable, and I was like, yo, what's on TV? I ain't never had these channels before. We only went up to, like, channel 70, and it went back to three. Yo. So, <laughs> uh, so like, uh, there was this channel, and I think we both know what this is. There's this channel called G4, right? Mm. And, the gaming like, network went out. Yeah. And I was like, they just play nothing but but video game stuff on this channel? And I was like, oh, okay. So I, there was a show called Cinematech. I, I just got out of school. There was, show, there was a show called Cinematech where it only showed video game trailers. And I was like, oh, my God, like Jack and Dasher 2 and, and, uh, um, and oh, my God, Splinter Cell, this game, these games look crazy. Like, and that's when I really started, like, getting into video games, like, when I gotcha. started, like, watching that channel. And then after Cinematech, there was this show called Cheat, where it just showed only, like, cheat codes for certain games. Uh-oh. And I was like, dog, I don't have to, I don't have to, uh, uh, read Tips and Tricks magazine. I can just watch this. They can give me cheats. This is amazing. Yeah. But the kicker, the one that I was like, yo, I need to be involved in this somehow, was X-Play. Mm. And it was, uh, the show with Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb, where they did video game reviews. Gotcha. And they video games, and it was just like, this thing to where like every new episode was three or four games that they would review. And that's when I was just like, I watched like that show all the time. And I was just like, bro, I need to find some way to be involved in this. Like that inspired me to mm. go to school for journalism mm. way back. Uh, like that, that inspired me to like find a way to get involved in journalism for college. I would later, you know, change my major to something just a, a tiny bit more practical. But Smash Brothers allowed me, like, even when I was in school, to, like, um, have this outlet where I could talk about video games still. Gotcha. And so I was just like, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down. I'm going to give it a go. I was ass for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. I, uh, I started at, uh, shout out Krebs, by the way tournament stars long like back when like the scene for smash board was like fresh and new mm. and i i started commentating there and uh i for a couple like for a year after that i just focused on playing i commentated whenever i could of course but it wasn't until i started partnering up with joey mm-hmm. that things started to kind of just snowball a little deep you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it was April 2018 when I started commentating with with Joey. But it was that same year that I also started to commentate FGC games because I started to commentate Street Fighter. Right. Okay. You know, I, I started commentating Street Fighter and then I got exposed to that world. And because it was that same summer in 2018 to where I commentated my first major at Texas Showdown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I, I got roasted. I ain't gonna lie. For that commentary. I got got fire flame. But, you know, experiences like that kind of emboldened me. Right? Well, well, what type of things were they, like, saying? They were just like, oh, man's is trash. It was, was bro, I I looked at that Twitch chat. And, like, like, it was the fact that I was, like, commentating with Yipes. And, like... Every time, like, there would be retort between us, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And, like, literally, like, somebody had counted the amount of times I said yes, sir, and it was, like, in the 300. It was wild. Oh. And and people were just saying, like, I'm ass. Get this guy out of here. This guy's an Zyclops. I'm just uh. like, damn, I'm up. Leave me alone. So, you know, like I said, that experience emboldened me, right? And I was just like, okay, I really don't want to be talked about this again. Right. In this light. So I just kept, you know, commentating and commentating and commentating. But yeah, that it was that same year to where I was just like I was I was with Joey and there I've had I've had a lot of commentary partners in my in my run uh, as a commentator in Houston. I'm sure. Yeah. A lot, a lot of a lot of them have been great, you know. Uh C O D, um he's the only person that I've like called Kazooie on the mic. Just because, like, he's the he's the one who's like always had my back when it comes to like you know knowledge, right? Because you know I wasn't all there for Smash knowledge, so he would just be right behind me, 
ready to, you know, fill me in with information. So Kazooie was always uh, – Kazooie. <laughs> COD was always great, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Um, it would, And then it would be the old gens who I got to know and I ended up being really good friends with, like Zori, like Genus, you know, okay, those yeah. guys. Those are just really, really good people who – I really happen to be really, really good commentators as well. And, you know, the guy who came from Austin, who, you know, is my best friend in Austin now, Joey, it was just like, that was the, that's, that was the, the mesh right there. That was like, they like click, that, like y'all were like on there and it was just like, oh shit. We, like, we were, we, every time we commentated, we were always on the same page, mm. right? We, every time we commentated, there was no lapses. There was no like, Oh, I'm a like whenever we hopped on the mic, like the fucking globe trotters, just fucking. <laughs> yes, bro. It was always the exactly what he said. It was always the same wavelength, and we kept commentating, and commentating, and then it was that. Uh, it was like that year going into the next year in 2018. For the rest of that year, we was just like you know what I'm saying. We were just picking up heat. Honestly, like we did NFA. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. No fun allowed. Yeah. We did no fun. We did no fun allowed three. We were both at DreamHack. You know what I'm saying? We were um. both at uh at, at TGC. You know what I'm saying? This is just this was literally just us, just like I mean, if it's in Texas, we just we just gotta be up there. We was uh we did a small stint at Zanji's Dreamland for T Log. Mm. It was just like we was just like you know that picture of the goat looking this way and the goat looking that way? In in 2018, that was me and Joey. Yeah, the Texas tour. That was that was me and Joey in 2018. So it's just like once. So, excuse me. So there was actually an event, right? Um, there was an event called uh, Ultimatum, right? Okay. And um, for is Ultimatum, that out in Dallas? I think. Yes, that's that's in DFW. See, yeah. come on, I. <laughs> Still got it. I knew. <laughs> so basically, there was this event called uh, Ultimatum because it was this was like, oh, this is gonna be the first, um, this is gonna be the first event for uh, for Smash Ultimate. Gotcha. Right. It's gonna be the first event for Smash Ultimate. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be the one of the first events in esports uh, esports arena. It's gonna be crazy. Oh amazing, damn! Right. I put an application in there. Right. I put an application for that. And me and Joey both did, right? And I figured, like, oh, I mean, Texas Dynamic Duo, we shoe in this. Mm -hmm. right? This is it for us. Okay? Mm -hmm. Joey got picked, right? I did not. Oh. Okay. And, like, I was heated. I was just like, like, what the, like, what the, what, what is happening? Like, I didn't get picked. I'm one of the premier talents in Texas. Right. This shouldn't be happening to me. But, like, the thing about that is that that experience it humbled me, right? Hmm. Because like, it was clear to me that like, I'm not good enough. And in order to be that good to where I'm undeniable, I need to work hard at it. And Joey knows this and Joey and I was just like, and I remember that I'll, I'll remember this quote, because this is the quote that fueled me for 2019. And I said, if I'm going to be undeniable, I need to outwork everybody in Texas who's doing this. And, uh, like, from that point on, I was just like, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm gung-ho about this. I'm about this life. And I remember I, I, I almost faltered. I really did. I almost faltered because, like, it was, like, literally, like, three weeks later in January where – um. It was either January or February, and Joey was like, hey, come on down to uh, to TGL. Dope-ass arcade, by the way. Even better one in Austin. Uh, yeah, uh, Joey was like, look, man, uh, there's a place you can commentate. We need you to come on down commentate uh, TGL for us. And I was like, uh, I'm off, but I really don't – I'm really trying to chill right now. And he screenshotted what I said and sent it to me. And I hopped in that car and went to that tournament. Oh my god! That—that's why Joey's in my life like that. Damn. Because I, we all because, need a Joey in our lives. Because 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 he had because he held me accountable. Yeah. For 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 stepping up. And 
I mean, from there, like, you know what I'm saying? From there, like, it was, it was, it was automatic, bro. Like, events, I was, I was getting, I was getting picked for him. I said DreamHack was 2018. It was actually 2019 in DreamHack where we got picked. Because shout out to Trey Fondren, by the way, for picking me, um, for choosing me to, to, for putting in the word for me to help me, you know, commentate that event because Texas Showdown was major. DreamHack Dallas, that was like my first, like, bruh, this is like. You're, yeah. you're going to be commentating brand name tournament a, like a brand name tournament premier smash event this yeah. is this is it for you and me and joey we we sat there we commentated and we had a lot of fun like no it was just it was it was it was crazy for me you know what i'm saying just because like ever since i started commentating like of course you believe in yourself you know what i'm saying but like sometimes it just it gets bleak and like it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. sometimes and for me I your head's down that. like grinding that you don't like see where you like where you're at yeah and i'm just like for the first time like after that event i could actually like you know smell the roses and be like oh wow this is this is this is, this is what this is like this is this is excellent i'm i'm very very happy about this uh that same year i went on to commentate at low tier city six yeah, I think it was I think I'm pretty sure it was Low Tier City, Low Tier City 6. And then uh the hat. <laughs> no, actually no. Uh, that was actually uh Low Tier City 7. And then that's when you reached out to me and Joey about uh Anime Monsters. No. Right? Which <laughs> <laughs> That shit was fun. I ain't going to yeah, front, bro. Okay. That shit I I I like I liked hanging out with all the and it, and it was not only just you. It was all the people I met. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, all the people working at Anime Monster too. They were just, it was just really cool people. We were just vibing out whenever we, um, whenever we like, you know, we're like working the event. And I'm just like, damn, this is really neat, man. It, it was, um, yeah. It was, I, it, I, I'm sure for y'all, it was just kind of, kind of interesting because it's like a big scale, like kind of event. Like it's a large event, but just like being able to kind of like, oh, okay, you know, we're gonna. It, it, it probably felt like a fun little like break like an interesting kind of different tournament than what you're used to you know yeah yeah and i was just like damn man like all the cosplayers are really cool yeah. and it's just like anime monster was my first anime convention right so i'm just sitting here and i'm just like bro the people involved in this and and you know the like like the culture behind anime and stuff like that i'm just sitting here i'm just like damn man this is this is really cool, man. This you met the you met really the cool. the voice actor for um who was it for Guile? Someone from no, Street Fighter. I met I met I met the voice actor for Ken Masters, and he was also Dante from Devil May Cry. Bro. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. He said he said he said all right, look, I'm gonna give you a signed autograph picture if you beat me in this first to one. I bodied that man, bro. <laughs> that man got eliminated. Bro. I said, give me this picture. This is way too free. Run I that said, shit. Hey, look, I said, look, this man, I'm going to get this man to low health. <laughs> guaranteed, guaranteed DP. And he's going to die, bro. Uh, oh, my God. See, I'm glad you get to have that experience. <laughs> and then, of course, you had to you had to tell me about that hentai. Yeah, the hentai paddle. <laughs> And he was like, and I was just like, I was sitting in the bed. I was like, I don't know, man. Hentai panel. That's kind of. That's what I said. I was like, bro, I don't. This is kind of. I don't know about this, man. And you looked at me. You was like, look, Banjo, listen. You really expect to go to an anime convention and not see a little tentacle? That's. Uh, look, come on. <laughs> and I said, let me get my ass up, bro. We about to go to hentai. We out, we out here, baby. Had to. Ask Banjo where that sign Ken pick is. It's with Joey. He's trying to cap. It's either with Joey or I might have lost it. But oh it, 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 it's, 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 it's one of those two. It's a 50 50. The other 50 being bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I did. So after Anime Monster, right? I'm just like, bro, these people are actually really, really cool. And I hope I can work with them again. This year would have been the year, but you already know how that went. Yeah. R.I.P. But but um 
Yeah, how many how many how many uh, tournaments and stuff did you have planned for 2020? Like what's the what's the what's the the hit list for what COVID uh knocked out? If you're I mean, unless it's going to cause some depression. Okay. I don't... It's not, it, it it it's it's not going to cause depression because it's going it, it'll give me hope for the, to try again for sure. Whenever whenever whenever, you know, we come back to events. Yeah. But um this year 2020 I started out uh, at uh, at Frosty Faustings. Um, Frosty Faustings, I think it was eleven or twelve, and um, it was an event that is a, a FGC event, but it's a very very large one for the Midwest. Mm. Um, I went with a bunch of uh, FGC folks, really cool people, by the way. I went with them, and um, I think no, uh, my homeboy uh, censored was there. Shout out censored. Um, and we commentated and we talked about the next major we were gonna do. I looked at him and I was like, We're both gonna get frostbite for sure. And I was like, Cause you've been you've been getting your grind on. I've been, you know, working really, really hard because before Frosty Faustings, I had commentated my first S tier major at Congo Saga. Mm. Mm. Over there in Cali- over there in California. Oh damn. You know, and shout and shout out to the people who crowdfunded me to get there. Um that happened, so that was already on my resume. So I'm nice, just like, love it, love we're it. Gonna do some, we're gonna do some frosty Faust things. Hopefully, I get it, which I did. Chill with the FGC homies; it was really cool. Um, and then me and censored, we talked about uh, we talked about what we gonna do after. And I was like, we both we're both gonna get frostbite. Everything's gonna be great between us. I was I'm not gonna lie; I was shocked I got it. I was I was very very shocked that I was able to got your it. shot. I was I was very very shocked, but I had to take advantage. I had to, and I had I saw that opportunity, and I was just like, "This is going to be the start of my 2020," because I had what is that? I had sent in an application for uh, CEO Combo Breaker mm. for Texture Showdown 2020. Mm. Uh, I I was going to send in an application. I was going to do top eight of standoff. No matter what, um, I was definitely gonna have. I was gonna see if I could commentate at Riptide, at Paradigm Shift in Iowa. Still counting. I, I had, I, the, I had a bunch of events planned that I was gonna do, and I was gonna try Don't Park in the Grass 2020 Port Authority. I mean Port Priority. Excuse me, Port Priority, and um, a, another 2GG event in in 2020 that was that was my plan like i had my 2020 panned out to me starting to move away from well not move away but move towards the fgc a little bit more okay right but like i mean those plans kind of just like came and went just because you know badness a, pa- a pandemic or whatever broke out so it's just like damn bro like i was I was stoked, man. It was looking man. stacked. It, it was. And that was just like, you know, those are tournaments that I was going to go to regardless. Those are tournaments that I was going to go to whether I got picked or not. Gotcha. But, like, it's just a shame, you know, because I wanted to be – I wanted to be involved. and But, I mean, it doesn't mean – it's not like, you know, I'm because, you know, I have next year. We just – I just hope that, you know, we can – get out of this you know rut of being in a pandemic you know what i'm saying i hope we can right that events come back and yeah exactly like because right now it's just like it's just not viable i mean that's rough for talent i mean that's rough for that's rough for like the talent involved in these big tournaments as well as like the the event organizers right especially for like you can imagine for majors and stuff it's like all that money that goes towards securing the venue and then all the money that goes towards you know having those different people there and all the moving parts and places for the production it's 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 rough for everyone involved and i know i mean i i know some tournaments were doing like gofundmes just to help cover the cost of the fact that they wouldn't be running a tournament so but definitely talent such as yourself like commentators are getting hit hard because they literally can't like what are they you know what are they gonna do go go do cast some league of legends or something like come on (laughs) Like it's like it's not it's not it's not terrible terrible just because like if you you can you have the opportunity to get selected for like the online events right yeah but it just kind of takes like all the uh, 
a lot of the social aspect out of it just because like, yeah because i mean you're traveling you're, out and seeing people yeah 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 because you're not traveling anymore you're just in the confines of your home and i can see how difficult it can be and i i hope that one day we do get back to events i miss a lot of people uh, i've met a lot of like really neat unique interesting people over the course of just me commentating because my resume is uh real thick right now love and, it and it's just like i i hope that i can make that resume just even bigger you know what i'm saying but uh yeah like the, the, uh, next year i'm definitely looking to make the same push for sure 100 percent Mm-hmm. So is that is that something that you're trying to so like what's the what's what do you see or what would you hope to see yourself in esports for the next like couple of years? So like if we look five years out at Banjo, right? What are you hoping yeah. to be working in or on or towards? You know, esports or otherwise, right? Like do you see yourself just getting to the point like what what's what's your big big goal? Like what are you gonna what are you striving for? You know? My next the the, the big goal that I have is like I need to be just that, not that all, not that, I need to be one of the most recognizable figures in esports in the next five. Mm. Like, I don't need to be synonymous with Dr. Disrespect or Golden Boy mm. or or Shroud or, or TK Breezy. I need to be... The next banjo, period. Okay. Like I need I like in the next five years, I need to be like, okay, who are we gonna get for Smash Brothers? Banjo. You're already on the list. No. Who are we gonna get? Who are we gonna get to host um to host Apex Majors? You mean get banjo? Who are we gonna get to host this ESPN event? This NBC event? We, we can definitely we can definitely get banjo. We have to check sure. banjo's schedule. We're gonna have to see. Love and it. That's that's the point where I'm gonna where I'm gonna get at. Not to say that like of course in five years I'm gonna be graduated college with a job. You know what I'm saying like I'm I'm gonna, definitely gonna be on <laughs> some normal adult responsible sure. type stuff. We have some plan B but shit. Like, yeah, but like the 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 goal goal is to be one of the most recognizable figures in esports that's the goal and the and the only way to get that is just you know i'm against the grindstone right and i just gotta be i gotta take by take it step by step like if i'm not i need to be if locals do ever come back in houston then i need to be the first choice mm. if, if if regionals ever come back then for top eight i need to be amongst the choices why I need to be I need to be amongst the choices to be picked for commentary. Free. Not like some oh well maybe we can no. We need to have banjo. That's that's how it has to be. Right. And and, and, and for majors, eventually I need to get to a point to where it's like, we need to have him. If he's available, we we have to have him. If we if he applies, then go ahead, bring him up. Cause, cause we know he can get the job done. We know he's a consummate. You, you want your, your your talent skill to be like undeniable. Yeah, and the only way for that to happen is, like I said, it, I, I the, like the work needs to be unprecedented, and I need to show up when it's like whenever it's whenever people my name gets called and it's time for me to show up, then you need to expect just the the banjo standard just. It needs to be hilarious. It needs to be informative. It needs to be super entertaining, and he has to appeal to the masses. That's mm. that's what that's what that's what you that's what people are gonna come to expect when they hear this. When they hear when they hear about banjo, mm. right? But only hard work in meeting myself halfway is gonna get me there. So, right. So I mean, is the progression for someone in commentary kind of like what you've already been doing, right? So it's like you 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 work yourself up so that you're kind of like an established figure locally and then you you yeah. you, you spread that kind of influence out so it's like okay regionally now okay this is a prominent figure in this and then okay like now you start applying to majors and say look at the results that i've had regionally these are the different like here's like a, a real a demo reel like here's the work i've done and then throwing it out there to see which majors pick you up and then building that resume of majors as well and then the film reel and getting all the clips and everything from that and then just growing bigger and bigger like growing that sphere of influence basically yeah and like um, not only that but mm. a big part of it is just like you know 
networking like mm. who do you know because like a, a big part of like you know an art form like this is that like you have to you have to grind like i compare this a lot to just the rap game you mm. know what i'm saying it's just like you can have like fire you can have fire beats you can have like killer killer bars but like if no one's heard about you then doesn't it, you know what i'm saying you're not going to get the groundswell that you need to pop off like you should so you know what i'm saying it's a lot like you have to it's a lot you have to network it's just it's just point blank period you have to network and you have to build connections that helps that helps a whole lot right right that helps a whole bunch you know what i'm saying yeah. like i knew people and uh what's up zedge good to see you baby so like um like what got me to commentate a lot of those events in 2019 was the fact that you know i i knew people and i'm just like hey i, I have a i have a reel yep. i'm not asking you i'm not asking you to reach reach but i'm asking you for one one shot so you can i just want you to see the demo reel i want you to see the work that's it right and judge for yourself because you stand by your yeah. work you're like I fucking know damn well if I put this in their hands or in front of their eyes, that and eyes and ears, that they'll they're they're like, oh shit, like this is I, it. I, I want like when they see when when people look at my reel, I want them to at least consider it. I'm not asking for an automatic yes. I I know that there's preferences for some people and, and some tos, but I'm just I just want a shot. Yep. I just want I, I want to give you an opportunity to look at the work, and then if you don't like it, okay, cool. It's whatever, right? But what I don't want is to just be dismissed out of hand. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be like, oh, this guy, and then just pass. There's, there's. I like, like you said, I stand by my reel. Yep. So if there's work that I can apply for, that's all I'm asking is a shot. All I'm asking is for an opportunity. And you let the work speak for itself. Let the work speak for itself. That's it. That's all I asked for. That is that is a very important part about the networking, though. It's like the, the cool thing about like going out to a bunch of different um, like majors and events is the people that you meet along the way. So like I know, so we were both at um. So I, I was at DreamHack Dallas as well, and I, I know I like had saw y'all, and I know y'all were commentating stuff, and I and I got to meet people from there, and that's just because I felt like going to you know I, I I really like DreamHack, I love that whole series, and then I got to do a lot of cool stuff there. Um, and it, it's just interesting because it's like you're right in that aspect of like you never know who that you meet and become good friends with or acquaintances or whatever. You know, you yeah. you meet one time in passing will give you that like, oh, yeah, you know, I know someone I met at this one event who, you know, he's really good, whatever, whatever. It, it's it's literally what happened when i was like oh i know banjo and joey i think you know oh i i i think they're really good commentators i know they're local to the, the um texas i think they'd be really good let me put their name in for one of the biggest anime conventions ever like you know second biggest third biggest in the country to like come commentate and that's something yeah. that y'all can say now like oh you know we did that that's something we did so i mean i think it's i think it's 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 very important. It's something that I, I kind of talked a little bit with um, Krebs when I had him on about like the uh, kind of networking and kind of like clout and stuff like that. Where it's like Krebs realizes that there's there's things that you have to do to kind of garner attention and like do things to kind of build yourself up or get that kind of influence around people. Yeah. Um, and then what we, we we ended up you know we we said you know it's all about doing it the right way and. T approaching it from the right angle right we're not doing anything crazy it's just this is what we know this works so we're gonna kind of play the game right exactly so like networking and knowing like how to market yourself yeah that super could, huge that could, turn, that, could, that could turn the tide for you right like um a good example uh just like uh player wise right is um is Trella, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever Trella would even speak on Twitter, bro, just whoosh, flames. Like, oh my God. This guy that, like, when that man uh, was uh, in uh, California for Congo Saga, when they campaigned for that man, yeah. just whoosh, 
funded, bro. Wildfire. Like, yeah. it, it's just like if he was even interested in social media by even a little bit, and he just decided to market himself. That man could have had uh, that man could have had an insane inside that he liked the game as well. He could have had an insane stream, hmm. insane for Twitch. He could have had insane stream. like YouTube com content like that angle. Could've, he could have been he could have been a full blown content creator. Hmm. Like, not not that it's a knock against him that he didn't. But sure. It was just like it's just you know. Yeah, people don't want to do it. That's yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's definitely your prerogative if you want to like do something like that. But like marketing could definitely like change the top, uh, turn the tide, bro. It can turn the tide, and then it also something that was big, which uh, you know, the smash scene imploding like it did. Yeah, absolutely yeah, insane. That, that's the idea. Uh, that's that's the idea of what happens when you know when cloud goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, man. I was waking up. I was literally waking up like, oh, who got canceled today? Like on my bed on Twitter, like who got canceled today? It was insane. Oh. All right, so a little background on this, right? First of all, fuck that day. Smashing <laughs> imploded on my birthday. Mm. On my on my damn birthday. I did not know that. The smash scene imploded on July second, twenty twenty. Uh, it was midnight. It it was it was July first, and then the clock hit midnight. And people just started getting canceled, 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 canceled. You're canceled. gone. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. Like now, for the Smash scene, there was clearly like a deep rooted problem in like God worship. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And favorit and favoritism yeah. and like you know. But to be honest with you, this is just a classic case of kids just not knowing how to act. Yeah, it's kind of like, what it seemed like in a lot of the stories I was reading. This is just this is this is an what have what's happening in the smash scene. Not for everybody, but for most. This is just an example of just like of like people who just got like way too comfortable and are just like just doing like outlandish shit. For the adolescents, y'all act y'all just acting y'all acting out just because y'all can't wild out at home. Mm. For adolescents, y'all. Yeah, it's work. like they're like weird pseudo celebrities, and they have and 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 they have people like messaging them and like whatever like going on, and it's like just yeah. regular ass. Like imagine some rando at your weekly. Okay, now they're like a pseudo celebrity. It's like okay, they're still that same person that was like just weird at a weekly or whatever, what have you, you know? I'm saying, bro, this man, this man pulls up his pants. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he. he he, he he puts on his shoes, bro. Like like everyone else. That's such a, that's such a shitty analogy. <laughs> yeah. But like um, but like they're just normal people, bro. And it's just like, but this when clout falls, goes wrong, this is this is also what falls on them as well because it's like there's more important things than popularity, right? mm. and the most important thing about that is like what you do with that popularity, right? Like when when and this is kind of like what happened with um well in a word like it's just like when you get on top like this, when you're like not on top, but like when you're like on a platform and yeah. you're like, you know what I'm saying, and you're established and all this other stuff, which is something that I definitely need to talk to Devin about. Hmm. Since he's gonna, since I mean, I don't know if he's planning to get back into the Smash scene in Houston, but like when you're established and when you start gaining popularity, and this is for everybody who's watching this, and I hope this gets recorded, it's just like when you are popular, you need to watch how you move at all times because people are constantly watching you. You need to watch how you act, watch what you say, all of that. Right, you know why MK Leo is one of like you know what I'm saying one of the most popular Smash pop. Uh, yeah, the paragon uh, in the community. Yeah, it's because he's literally he literally plays. He's not he's not wilding out on Twitter or Facebook all the time, 
and that's it. Right? And this is how you have to, like, you know what I'm saying? This is how you have to act. You know what I'm saying? I have and like, yeah, and it's just like, you don't just, and this is at tournament as well, right? There's a certain way that you're supposed to act and conduct yourself even behind closed doors, right? Because it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Some of this stuff comes to light, you know what I'm saying? Especially especially if you do stuff in the dark and you do stuff that's like inappropriate, like it always comes to light. And if you, if you feel bad about doing something, you shouldn't be doing it. Right, right. If you have to worry, oh, am I going to get caught doing X thing? You shouldn't be doing X thing. Especially, especially, especially if you're a figurehead. Especially in this day and age, right? Because you can get, you can just get outright canceled, right? It's it's a it's a it's an important point because it's kind of like there there's almost like there was a degree of almost like professionalism missing in kind of the conduct, some of the things that these people were doing, right? It's like there's a level that you gotta have to hold yourself to, and say, okay, yeah. look, this is not okay around me. This is not something I will condone. This is something I won't do as like a person, as a character, especially now, like you said, all eyes are on you. If you yeah. whatever have some type some modicum of like okay people are watching me, yeah because like a, a lot of people in the community especially Smash y'all got a lot of energy right and like people are people are looking at you right so you need to you need to watch how you move and like not to say that everybody's like treating it a certain way but it's just like you know uh, at when it comes to Smash, a lot of people were just, like, running loose, like, just doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? Is what it felt like. So, maybe the community imploding like that was for the greater good. Right. Bringing those actions to light. So, may, and then maybe it'll inspire people to, like, act right. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you, there's a certain way you're supposed to act. And if you, like I said, if you feel bad about something, then just don't do it. Because yeah. like your career, especially if you're in, uh, especially if you're like well established, yeah, in the Smash community. If you're a Twitch your partner. Career, your, your you have career, an org. You're a Twitch partner. You have an org. You have you have sponsorship deals. You got deals. You're 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 one of the best players in the world, bro. Hey, you need to just chill, and just like you need to chill and just like make your money. Make your money because it because like there's maybe five people in Smash Brothers who are making actual money out this to where they don't have to work a, a normal job. So and it's just like is is all of that worth losing due to an emotional response? Yeah, and the answer is no. Don't and it's crazy. There, there's a giant vacuum now too. Like all these giant people in the community like well 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 known names all just boom gone just fucking just snap gone you know and it's like yep. there's a giant now, vacuum for people to yeah and now and now the new gens get to take their place yeah and no and, and, and see and get a first hand example of like this is the standard that we're gonna have to hold people now if we weren't before we're definitely doing it now of like absolute like yeah. zero tolerance which is good like that's good that should have been how it was in the first place. Yeah, it's now, it's kind of yeah. Now, it, and now it's just on the it's on the 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 people or whoever's gonna fill in those spots to be like, all right, I can't mess this up. Yep. And, and it's not like it was difficult. Just chill. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Be cool. Stop. Uh... Yeah, bro. Don't don't be out here trying to be inappropriate to people and trying to be out here and. And think you can do this, that, and the other. Or something. Wiling out, yeah. Yeah, bro. Part of part of the it, it, it's a it's a tangent, but um, it, it it's part of the reason why. So I have you know I have this podcast and I have the other podcast. So like the relationship kind of dating, whatever podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like part of the reason why I I thought it was really important to do something like that is because like, especially on Twitch where it's a lot of you know heavily male audience, a lot of basement dwellers. I think that like there's a lot of good that can come for guys and for for the guys themselves and for the women that they might interact with. If okay, they hear from women, these are the things that like are bad that you should not do that like will not you know no no bueno. And then like these are the horrible experiences that some women might have had with guys in these different situations or whatever. 
And here's how maybe we should be right so i i i i pen it as like this is a little learning experience for me and the twitch chat to like you know if i can help make less incels in the world or less people who feel some type of way or just acting kind of inappropriate then that's a win-win for men and women right yeah, so i, I mean like, so yeah like there's certain there's certain like things nuances right that like people are like that people don't see when you know oblivious people, yeah, but when people communicate with each other, especially like men and women, so it's just like, it's just like some some people will like have an inch, you know, take a mile. It's like, yeah. oh, like they did heart react on my on my page. Hey. I'm in, boys. I, yeah. Let me let the I'll, Discord I'll, know I'm in, boys. <laughs> I'll send them some hentai. Maybe they'll like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Come on, dog. No, don't, don't. There's <laughs> levels. Like, Bro, There's I, levels. I, I, I'm see. <laughs> No I've comment. seen things and and I I can't I can't do it, man. I yeah. can't. Yeah, so it's a, it's it's important. Like... It's important. So, I mean, like the um the it's 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 there's a lot of there's a lot people can learn, and I mean a lot for me to learn. Like I don't I don't pen as like me and this person are gonna talk about how you need to behave. It's like oh okay, like this is something I didn't know that maybe I'm gonna keep a lookout for, right? Yeah, man. It's all like communicating between human beings. It's always it's always a conversation and it's always ever changing and evolving. So, and you have to have, you know, talks about like what you're comfortable with, what you're uncomfortable with, because yep. like, if you don't talk about it, it just manifests itself in an unhealthy way, you know, yep. like being on 4chan until five in the morning or like, <laughs> <laughs> or like, or, or, or having like the un unhealthy addictions. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like when, the, when that manifests into like, communicating with somebody yeah. and it's just like you lose that person you know what i'm saying and then it's like only when you start to try to gain that person you know back in confidence to where it's like it starts to get uncomfortable and things you know it's awkward situations with people right but like people think it's 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 okay to be awkward like you're a human being right right awkward awkward situations happen to you like nobody's perfect i'm not perfect you're not perfect but mm -hmm. like it's only when you try to be overbearing and force yourself on someone else that it like becomes a problem, right? But you can always you can always work something out by talking through, it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just insane. The smash scene literally blew up, and I was just like, "What the fuck is happening?" That shit was on my birthday, and I was like, "Bro." Oh wait, can I? You said what? I said, and and they're and they was doing this stuff while my birthday was happening, so I was yeah. like, "Bro." Come on, man. That's not. Y'all got it. I'm trying to celebrate. Like, I wasn't like what was happening. What was happening in the Smash scene was definitely heinous. But yeah. I think the point of it all was like, bro, this is a children's party game. Y'all need to just stop wilding out, bro. Think of the kids. Well, no one, please, someone, please think of the kids. Y'all don't want y'all don't want to get canceled and and sent up the river for a children's party game. Don't do it to yourself, man. Man, and it sucks. It sucks because I'm like, man, there's such a giant like hole that could be filled for um this content, and I don't play Ultimate, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah, because uh. it's just like, and I'm just happy that this this is just like something like I'm good at commentating and emceeing because of my job. So it's just right. Like, I'm cool. Like, right. I'm, how many? I'm how many good. years you have in the in that in that business? That uh, like entertainment DJ. Like let's let's DJ B banjo. It's, uh, DJ banjo. Should I? <sighs> I don't have a DJ name. Uh, not yet. Not yet. So basically, um, I've been DJing since. 2000 and here i actually i took a picture of it right you did i think i saw it on facebook you're like oh it's been so many years at think think thing listen <laughs> i want to i actually uh, okay so i i've been a dj for nine years as of three days ago i've been a dj for nine years dang why am I not rich? I don't fucking know. Yeah, bro, just work well, clubs. I... Fuck it. He, look, here's the here's the thing, right? Yeah, give me the knowledge. Give me the knowledge. I, I have ignorant. so much like okay, so listen, right? 
I feel like unless you're like a high tier DJ, right? I'm not gonna say clubs are really good for clout for sure. Okay. And like once you're once you're like semi established, clubs are good for you because you know promoters will pay extra to have you up there. But it's like starting off, bro. A lot of these clubs that I went to were definitely politicking. Like it was it was kind of shitty. Hmm. And I actually learned this. I learned this from DJ Flip Hop. He said, "Look, bro, they they'll they'll charge you." They'll have you playing from nine to two and only pay you one fifty. Oh, and I, and I nine said, to two, and I said he made more as a server. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Oh. and you know, back whenever I started working, I didn't know working like weddings was like really the move. Like hmm. I've been doing this for years, which is hilarious because I got so many ridiculous stories. Um, Please. So like uh being a DJ, you can make bank. Like serious you can make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money, right? Uh the entertainment company that I work at that's unnamed. I'll I'll leave it at that. Redacted. They take a certain yeah, they take a certain percentage because I use their equipment, right? Okay. So um like the amount of like money that you can make just doing this by yourself was unpressed is unprecedented and i always and i always kind of just shoved it to the side to be honest just because like like the job that i work at at jp entertainment is just like i'm just blessed because like apparently finding dj work by yourself if you're not if you're not an established dj can be hard it can be difficult but my job, they're able to, they're so good at what they do that they're able to just find jobs for me to just go work. Like, it gotcha. never, never, in a they bring in the, like, the leads. Yeah. Like, never in a million years would I thought that I'd be DJing for, for proms and, you know, homecomings in my community because, like, I just thought that, like, you like, know, I, you're I, like, who do I even reach out to that? Like, how do you even. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, if I was like a solo event or solo gig by myself, it's just like, I don't even know how I would begin to try to reach out to talk to these people. Gotcha. It's just like, it's based off the connections and things like that, that, you know, that my job and my boss has. And the fact that like, I could, bro, I've DJed for, for schools in the side fair district. I've DJed for schools in the Aldine ISD district. Uh, what is that? I've DJed for, for Comcast, I've DJ for uh for NBC out here in, mm. in in Houston. Like I've DJ for the Houston Chronicle. Like I'm I'm literally all over the place. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like these jobs are great, but they're not going to get me to the popularity that I need to be at. Which is like I need to be like that mainstream that mainstream job that mainstream DJ guy. Like I want to be the guy that's like. No, is that where the money's no. at, like those events and stuff. Like this time, this time next year, if there's esports events, I'm definitely going to be DJing those, those after parties. That's, That's the move. Be, okay, for sure. And imagine for networking sure. at these type of events. Come on. And then it just it just builds from there. Come like, on. I I need to be DJing. I like it in that Facebook status I posted. I've been doing this shit for nine years, and it's just like I've been like teeter teeter tot tee tottering, and I'm just like no. I need to have boat money, which, you know, me and boat my money. friend came up with that. Yeah, me and my friend, uh, Angelo, she was like, while I was in Nevada with her, I, she was like, listen, you, we, you need to have boat money because we need to be out here on these on the, on the these lakes chilling, beers in hand. Yeah, I'm at, yeah, you're That's fucking what? what, Lake Tahoe? You're like, listen, next need, time we're hey, here, man, we're on that motherfucker. I need that shit. And I needed that trip, to be honest with you. Yeah. I really did. Yeah, it felt like for, like, with with everything happening in 2020, like, um, like I felt like I was going to just explode, to be honest with you. Like, and, and it's that, like, that, that see no evil, hear no evil type shit to where it's like, I really didn't expect how unprecedented mental your mental health could actually be gotcha you know like um i think it was like uh what is it 
it was like mid June. I woke up and I had this like this numbness and this weird like a sleep feeling in my left arm. I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna just walk it off. But as the day went by, like my arm felt weak, right? And it felt crazy. And I'm just like, oh, I really don't like this. So I uh I just kind of like let it go for like um for like a week and the pain still persisted and I went to a hospital I went to a doctor because I thought that I was like having a stroke I thought that I was like, like having what's happening I, I thought that something was like wrong with my heart like and I just went to the doctor and the doctor was like nothing's wrong with you man I mean you know well we checked your we did the EKG on you to check your 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 heart rate and everything and your lungs, you're breathing normally. So you're, you're fine. Right. So yeah, I went home after that and the symptoms still persisted for like another like week. And I was just like, I was not right. It's like, I have fucking COVID. I have COVID-19. <laughs> no, the worst, like, the worst was, starts start racing. Yeah. Because like, because like, uh, whenever I was breathing, it hurt. Like I had, I had pain. I had, I had chest pains. Hmm. Just sitting here, I'm just like, I have, I have fucking COVID, bro. I don't know what's wrong with me. So I went to the doctor again, and they were like, "Uh, yeah, you actually, because I was like super stressed and freaking out, and I pulled." Um, they were like, "Yeah, you just pulled something, pulled a muscle in your chest, bro, from all that working out." And he looked at me, and the doctor looked at me, and was like, "Is everything okay?" And I mean, now that you told me that it's just my chest, I feel fine. It was like, okay, because, and he was like, have you been working out? And I was like, no, not really. And he was like, okay, so what you're showing and which is really what fucked me up for like that day was like, um, dude, what you're showing is psychosomatic symptoms of stress. And I was like, me? And, and I'm just like, I... I didn't know that this could happen to me. Mm. And like, man, so I got, in, I got in my car, started crying because like, that was like the first time in my life to where I felt like I just wasn't in control of shit. And I didn't know, I didn't know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? So that happened, you know, and then, you know, my fucking, uh, you know, the the Smash Universe fucking imploding on itself. Mm. Remo getting canceled. He was my friend. Yeah, still my friend. our friends. I and mean, yeah. Got, and he got and he got fucking he got fucking canned. And I'm just like, I I just I can't fucking do this right now. I really can't. But like Angela, she you know she acted as my rock for like four days in Nevada. And I needed that trip or I was actually going to snap, to be honest. Like, I needed, I needed that, I needed that trip in Nevada because, like, I needed to just get away from it all. And when I came back, it gave me perspective on what I felt like I finally needed to do, which was I need to finish school and get my shit together, number one. I need, I need to have boat money for DJing at the end of 2021 or sometime when, when these events come back and when it's safe to do so. Right. And I just need to just overall just, you know, after yourself. Happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's just like, I, to have like psychosomatic symptoms of stress like that and to, really like feel like your shit was just spiraling out of control i definitely 1000 percent needed that trip because i was gonna because it just wasn't looking good if i didn't like uh like from what happened today like i, I wouldn't i wasn't gonna be able to handle it. gotcha i wasn't gonna be able, i wasn't gonna be able to deal with that today if i didn't if i didn't take that trip to nevada that trip to nevada was the smartest thing i could have done for 2020. Mm. Just kind of that, that like that like soft reset, you know. You say A B start, yeah. A A A B L Y L R start, you know. That like let me yeah, let me L just L R that start L R A right. Yeah, yeah. I needed, I needed it. I'm very happy I took it because you know, like I said, now I have I know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. That's 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 I mean that's that's a lot. I I, I didn't know that was the the background 
behind your trip, but it's it's a lot. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, and you can tell me if you relate, but like, I generally don't see myself as like a stressed person, right? Like, I don't I don't think that I do that. And I'm sure you may have probably thought the same way. And then when you have these strange symptoms for that long, and then you literally have a doctor say, yeah, no, like, you're stressed. This is literally stress manifesting in your body. It's like... I can't even imagine like it's just like I, I I can see how I could easily been in the same boat of like or be I, mean, I could be right now like you know just like you're just like ah, it's yeah, fine it's fine like, it's fine it's cool whatever I'm chill I'm chill 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 and then it's like no like things aren't right and then it just kind of smashes your whole perception of what you thought was going on and you're just like wow like I thought I knew what was going on I definitely don't. And I need to I, I I'm kind of like thankful that that happened to me. Because I would still be walking around like disillusioned, like mm. I, like I'd be walking around like uh, you think you have what's going on, but you really don't. So, but I'm really happy that you know I went on that trip and I'm back. But yeah, 2000, 2021, when events come back, oh money, you can definitely first, first, first I'm gonna get a real DJ name. Then okay. I got so much shit planned for like the rest of this year. Love it, like. Like, of course, the night show is still going to be a thing. Which we, right? we still have to talk about. I still want to make sure yeah. everyone knows about how amazing that's been. Okay, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, like, yeah. Uh, aside from the night show, like, because, you know, commentary isn't going to be an IRL thing for a while. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to get back into music. I'm just making, starting this weekend, I'm going to be making... SoundCloud mixes. I'm going to be streaming like on Twitch and Facebook Live. Yeah, I was going to ask. Any, any DJ streams in the future? Yeah, definitely. And it, it started. It's actually this weekend. Love it. Love this it. Weekend, Push this TV slash banjo, please banjo. Yes. Check check me out. So this weekend, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna start a mix at noon. Right. Okay. That first hour is gonna be like just some top forty type shit, and then the next hour, since I'm feeling rebellious, it's gonna be all run the duel. So love I'm it. I'm going to be doing that this Saturday. So twitch.tv slash banjo plays banjo. If you guys I'll be on be, that. Yep. If you guys want to be just, hey, just turn the stream on. You know what I'm saying? Listen to some tunes with your boy. I'm going to be cooling for two hours every Saturday. Love right? it. Because like, because, because of COVID, it, it, it acts my fucking events <laughs> yep. because of COVID. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to start streaming from home, DJing all the sets. That'll get me better at DJing. That'll yeah. prepare me better to make better set lists. That'll prepare me better and spread awareness that I'm a DJ. Like, if if Valhalla Esports Bar were to open up in 2021, they should look at, at me and be like, okay, we want him. Listen, I hey, I, I talked to the owner on... Well, I, I say I talked to the owner, but I, I follow the owner and stuff on LinkedIn and stuff. Like, he's... He's a, he's, a, he's a real down-to-earth guy, and I know that they're trying to open one here in Houston. So, I mean, listen, I'm saying. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put in a word. Whatever tiny little scraps of uh, networking I have with that person, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put a good word in. Look, and then that's, this, is, this is, I need it. I need it. Yeah. So, besides, so I'm going to be doing that, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get real, like, fun with it, you know, all throughout the rest of this year. Uh, and then next, and then next year when events come back, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to start putting my, put my name out there make sure that I go to more like events when it comes to DJing, more turntable meets. I'm really trying to like get the whole thing music, uh, the whole music thing popping off, Love especially it. DJ. And I think it's been a long time coming cause I've been doing this shit for nine years. Nine years. And it's, like, and it's like, if, if I'm going to be doing this thing for 10 years, then the next 10 years sh- should be me. DJing in South by Southwest, DJing in oh. DreamHack after parties. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Being there, um, DJing in esports after parties, events, and things like that. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually, you know, doing shows and getting paid boat money for those shows. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. So hopefully, 2021, 22, and 23 and beyond. That's the plan for me musically. And like I said, it's just it's a, it's a grind. So you know. Hard work pays. Yeah. And, and it will pay. So, yeah. I mean, the, the skills are there. I mean, you've been honing those skills for like so long where it's like, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a crime not to start finally being like, you know what? I'm fucking, this is something I'm good at. This is something, this is a, a craft that I've been mastering. It's time to actually apply it to what I'm already doing really well and the industries that I'm really interested in and also get paid for it. 
Yeah, like like I've been doing like all these events, which I I okay. So my great flaw is I I fucking hate being denied when it comes to certain shit. And me DJing in this area of Cyprus is one of them mm. because like these school because like so these schools right. Let's be honest, bro. A lot of these schools Caucasian in the Cypher area. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. Y'all parent y'all y'all Caucasian parents. Y'all don't like rap music. Y'all don't like it. Y'all don't like it. Y'all don't like it when kids listen to that shit. You don't they like do, it. They do, but you don't like it. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. they do. The kids, the kids love it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. The kids love to listen to Drake, Polo G, uh, NLO, NLE Chopper, Lil Yachty. They love all of it. It's like a good TikTok. I mean, come on. And, like, this is something that I've always wanted to address. There is just not subtle nuances, but there's just a disconnect between parents who drop their kids off at proms and homecomings and the kids. Like, if you parents really want an introspective of what your kids listen to at the prom, open their Spotify. <laughs> that is, that is, that is, that is exactly what I play. Open their Spotify. <laughs> A lot of y'all are not gonna like it. I'm gonna be real with y'all. A lot of y'all are not gonna like that shit. But I can tell you for a fact, what I what what I play is no different because oh. of because of the way they react to it, right? I done been to so many proms and I done, I done did I done done so many corporate parties, mm. so many weddings, so many um, <laughs> so many like uh, school events. You all, they all respond to one thing. It's either if they don't like top forty, they love hip hop. Gotcha, gotcha. Don't be that. There was some. There was some. I remember I was at a DJ event for a school, and I'm out here playing like my hip hop set, and everybody's getting into it. Everybody, all the kids are dancing. They're having a really good time. But at every pond that I've ever, at every party that I've ever done, there's always that one kid who comes up and is like, "Hey, can you play?" Elvis Presley, a little less conversation, like it's like dog conversation, <laughs> like dog, like look at your peers. Read don't the room, fam. Read the room. Don't don't do this, and I'll never forget this shit. Somebody came up to me and was like, "This guy's visiting from Arizona. You're not gonna play the song for him." No, no, I'm not gonna play. Fuck it for Arizona. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna play it for him, but like I get. I actually. Can you watch. play this? Can you oh play this? Oh my god! Oh my god! Can you? Do you have an ox cord for this? And I'm just like, get off the stage. You have to leave. Like they'll come up in droves, and I was like, you promised. You promised me you'd play this for me. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, bro. It just, I, I, I don't have time. And you know what's wild? The kids they come up to me with memes, with memes. They want me to play memes. Uh, uh, crab rave. I was about to say uh, crab rave. Yeah, crab rave. The uh, JoJo's part five. Hey, yes. that's they that's asked fire. Me for JoJo's music. That's fire. They asked me for they asked me for Sonic music. They've asked for music from Minecraft. Like, yo, calm one, stop. ten hour, calm one. I'd fucking, <laughs> I'd rave to that <laughs> shit. It don't stop, bro. And and sometimes, like, um, for the weddings. Sometimes, sometimes the adults act worse than the kids, right? Uh -oh. So imagine, like, so imagine you go to a wedding. It's beautiful. Uh, some of the pageantry for this wedding and some of the couples and families, they're amazing. They're beautiful people. Yeah. Right? And, and I'm happy to do a lot of weddings, which is crazy because, like, some of these venues, it was just, like, stuff that you would never dream of, right? So when you start going to weddings. Elegant ass. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I got as you. A, as, a, as, a, as a guest. You will, you will, you will, you will definitely see some of the some of the plates I've gotten. First wedding I ever did, ravioli bar. I ain't never heard of no shit like that. Oh what? <laughs> what? It was wild, bro. <laughs> um, I was at a wedding. Uh, inside of um, the Astros, which is one of my favorite weddings I did. By the way, it was the the Astros, like uh, uh, the station where the Astros, like um. 
It was in the baseball park. It was in Minute Maid. In the in the bullpen, the... like were they like down? Not the not not the bullpen. We gotcha. weren't on the field. Gotcha. We were in one of the rooms behind the field where they, gotcha. where they held like the trophies and stuff. And I'm just like, damn, this is just another day at the job. It was wild. Wow. Right? Um. Uh, another wedding I did. Um. <laughs> so, weddings get wild, and I'll tell you two words that make them wild: open bar. Oh, baby. So when that bar is open, it's no it's no holes barred, no no stone unturned. Everybody's Damn. getting turned up, bro. It's crazy. So there was this one wedding I did where it was in fact open bar, right? and at the end of the night we have a little sparkler exit, and we get them, we get them sparklers, and they and they uh, we light them, we get the assistants to light them and stuff, and they go outside, and then uh, they hold them up above, and then you know they send the uh, the bride and groom through, and they take beautiful pictures, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, when you're drunk, it's not so beautiful, right? So basically, this dude grabbed a shit ton of sparklers. This man put them hoes in his hand, bro. Put them in his hand like this. He was like, hey, what do I do? I like this. That hole, blah, just detonated, right? You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to uh, light sparklers under a roof because it's a fire hazard. And they were all like on a... They were like in a patio type deal. Yeah. So he had to he had to be far out, number one. Two, yes, his hand did get blown up. Yo. They had, to, they had to call they had to call a hospital. They had to call they had to call an ambulance for this man. We had they had to rush him out and they ruined that exit for the uh for the bride and groom. Yo. And now in the back of my head, I'm just sitting here, I'm just like, okay. This actually isn't the worst thing that happened because this this actually didn't happen to me, right? So it's for to be a wedding DJ in my profession, even after nine years of doing this, I get so nervous mm. doing weddings, bro. Mm. Because it's just like I'm a special moment. Imagine being labeled the guy who who ruined a wedding. Ugh. In my in my career of of being a DJ, that's happened to me five. I can say it's happened to me five. Damn. Where like they, where they've called the office asking for refunds, angry. They've, you know, cursed me out in front of their guests. They like blame me because uh, I'm the elephant in the room, right? If something goes wrong, they instantly gonna be like, "Hey, you!" Like, uh... there, there, there was a time, there was a time where a wedding went bad, where the power went out, and I still got blamed for it. Okay, reminds me of there's Dreamhack been, there's, Dallas. Oh. There's, there's been, t- there's been. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Justin, what if you're that? watching, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. You did that, man. I didn't say nothing. So, there, there's been times to where, like, um, on introductions, I've said people's names wrong. Does that shit there's- keep you up at night? Like, like, cause I mean, you know, you know, it's five. So, like, does that shit like you wake up in a cold sweat? Like, ah, I said Johnson when it was Johannesson. Hey, it's those little things. I yeah, I, yeah. I remember- a wedding that kept me up for like a week and a half Fuck. because like um because it, they were gay and i said mister and i was just like oh because they were both les because they were it was a lesbian wedding and i said mister oh and, and she and she looked at me with such hatred and she wrote a review and was just she was I was getting ethered, bro. And I'm just like sitting here and I'm just like I I didn't mean it. I literally I did not mean to do this. I, but like they weren't they were not having it. Uh, and it's just like and it's just like, hey bro, like from my perspective, I don't care. You could be getting married to a fish in the fishbowl, bro. Yeah, That's, you can get married to a Martian. You know what I'm saying? But like the the money's green. So it's just like it doesn't. It doesn't. There's no hate me. in your heart for money. Not at all. No, and these families. No, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's 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 fucking okay. Like I, I exactly like you've done like hundreds of fucking weddings. It's Every Mrs. Time. Oh fuck, dude. Because you said gay wedding, you said Mister. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then you're like, no, oh, was a lesbian wedding, and I call one, and bro, yeah. and it's just like, and and what keeps me up, what kept me up about that. It's just that, like, this happened at the beginning of the wedding. 
So it's just like off to the bad foot, now, bad start. Yeah. So now for four hours, you you think you're you you think you're totally in the line, but in reality, you've actually lost them. And that's hap- that's happened to so many DJs who have come at my job, and it's just like when you lost, when you lose the. Uh, when you lose the bride and groom or the, the person who paid for the party in the first five minutes, their mood is, is messed up for the rest of the night. And you can't get that bad, right? That's 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 the that's the bad part about it. The great part about it is is that when they ask you to stay, that's Bam. when it's like okay. that's when it's like amazing. Cause then them fools is paying paying Buku whatever money. They're paying whatever to get you to stay. That's that's the people you want, right? Yeah. When they when they cheer for that one more song and I and I'm packing up and I'm just and they're just like, oh, well, come on, man, what's it gonna take to stay? Well, I need this much money now, or I'm le- or I have to go. And it's like, all right, here's double that. I I'll I one you got more it, time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's that's some of the uh, man. It's just, it's high stakes, like crazy high stakes. Because, you know, if yeah. you fuck up, you're ruining someone's perfect moment for the rest of their lives. Um, and if not, you get, you know, it's good. It's good money, apparently. But, like, you know, those moments like that, those, uh, that moment where I have to be just absolutely focused, it just, it, it keeps me focused and it's kept me focused, like, uh, for that portion of the job every time I've worked it. Mm. It's really good. You know what I'm saying? It, keep, it, it kept me consistent, right? My boss said, my boss was like, hey, you're human, but you only got five. You, you get five weddings to mess up a year. But in my career being a DJ for nine years, I can say I've only messed up no more than five times. Amen. For sure. And we're going we to for sure keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> God. That's, that's such high stakes, man. Like I, I, So um, one of my roommates, he's a wedding videographer um you know um tram tram she's a video for photo- or wedding photographer and stuff so like i hear about from them like they have such contingencies for shit like that like if they have one camera goes bad they have another camera set up and they have backup cameras and backup batteries like they have shit like that but like for djing and stuff and, and stuff that like you, you get one shot you get one shot for a lot of or at least the introductions and stuff especially if you're emceeing or hosting i imagine it's like yeah. fuck the stakes yeah, like, but to be real, I think uh, wedding uh, wedding videographers and photographers, I think they got it. Like, I think the stakes are way higher for mm. than it is for me. Mm. And and I, and I say that because like, this is this they they have these. Like, they're gonna expect to show people these, right? Gotcha. After the after the wedding, like gotcha. after the wedding, they're gonna forget about me. Yeah, they're gonna forget about me. Yeah, but like the they didn't play gasolina there, enough, and then they're gone. They're already buzzed. Yeah. They, yeah, bro, they're they're gone. They're gonna forget about me. The guests are gonna forget about me. But the get, but the wet, the bride and groom, they're gonna want. They're gonna okay. Want their pictures, and they're gonna want. They're gonna want their video. Gotcha. They're gonna show. They're gonna watch this again. Yeah. They're gonna. Yeah. They're gonna look at these pictures again. So they need to be perfect. I didn't think about that. Yeah. No. I I, I see what you're saying because like you only walk down the aisle once. There's no redos. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And I'm looking, and when and when people like. Uh, like uh, Josh Olade, uh, One PC, and then when people like Tram Tram are doing events like those, they're they're not they're this isn't a hobby. That's they're consummate professionals. Yeah, they're they're legitimate. Like these are these are legitimate professionals who do professional work. So, you know, what I'm saying, uh, and I see photographers all the time. A lot of them are really cool. I mean, a lot, a mo- like all of them really are just like really cool. They're just like you know, pounding around. They take their shots and then you know they leave. But then the real kicker is that they have like two or three events over a weekend, but they're only there for like three hours. Mm. A lot of a lot of them have to do editing. To be fair, but even then, it's like yes. imagine three events and then editing all the photos. Yeah. Ugh. So like a week a week's worth of work in like what, a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they've yeah. been they've been kind of hit hard too because as you can imagine, there's not a lot of weddings and stuff. So. Yeah, and like I, I really want them. They have to be in a position to where it's safe. I've even been edgy about like trying to go DJ events because like like water parks and stuff. Listen, they <laughs> so all la- all of last year I DJed over there. Typhoon, Texas, yeah, yep. Uh, and like uh, 
every Saturday I was up there and then pools were, were filled to the brim with the people in that wave pool and I was on that stage. You know, <laughs> dancing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like um and it's just like now thinking about it now, that's super dangerous. Yeah. To try to try to go out there like that. Just I'm not I'm not really with it. You know what I'm saying? Still very dangerous and I just, you know, to all my brothers and sisters out there who are trying to get their, you know, still trying to get their paper up with the with the photography at the weddings and events like that, just do it, but please be careful, man. Please be careful. And I know it's hard because for some of these people it's like this is how they make their money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's just and it's just really difficult at this time. The event all the event event professionals. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but that's what the uh, the night show's for. You know what I'm saying? For people Amen. Who are not going for, for people who are not going out. Staying inside on a Friday. Yeah, bro. Come come chill with your boy once again. Twitch.tv slash Banjo plays Banjo. The night show is tomorrow. Amen. Uh, it it was a show that you were part of for a little bit. Yes, sir. I was very happy to have been on there and do my little yeah. thing. Spread my ignorance, especially on the Disney brackets, bro. I <laughs> I, I got I was very. I was just flagrantly wrong when I posted my the when I posted the brackets and stuff. People were heated. They're like, "What the fuck is this?" These boys were just like insane, insane. It was like, "Hey, you're wrong." <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, like, and, what the fuck like, is this? Like, and it, it just wasn't like that bracket. It was like the Disney bracket. It yeah. was the tsunami bracket. Like, like I, I started like. Yeah, wait, wait. Bring us, bring us back, bring us back. For the people who don't know who are listening, what is the night show? What is the night show? The night show is originally a podcast with all my friends to talk about the nerd shit that we love to talk about, bro. Yep. So I started the night show because um, it's just like it was just a space for just me and my homeboy. You know, we we can't we can't see each other, you know, right. we can't, we can't really hang out with each other because this is the stuff that we would talk about, you know what I'm saying? If we were together, I started the night show podcast because like, you know, I just wanted to just spend time with my people, but also my people are fucking hilarious. So I'm just like, we need to have this on display for people to see yeah. and people, people gravitated to it. People, people liked it. People it's the same type of discussions other people are having in their discords. And they're like, okay, these guys get it. Like, this is what we're doing. Yep. Like, and, the, and, they, and that's just where the... So, as the night show went on, I elaborated on a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? I made a schedule for it. It actually has a Twitter. Um, yep. I, I got updated graphics for it. I, um... I made sure that there's content that we can keep talking about over and over again, but like the content has evolved, right? The content is, um, is, it's not, it's not smarter, but it's, it's well prepared. So that right. way it makes for more. It's, it's pre-produced. It's, pro right? it's a produced show. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Which so, is important. Yeah. So, right. So for obvious reasons, we lost the cast, we lost a member, but then we gained, uh, for this season, for this, for the season that just started, we gained Big Body Karate, who he was kind of like, and he came to me because he was like shy, you know, he he didn't know how to really like get his feet off the ground whenever he was like streaming because he was just like you know just a shy streamer, mm -hmm. right? And I said, look, bro, when you come to the night show, don't think of it as like you know a production. You just you just chilling out with us, bro. That's talk your shit. We're gonna, talk, we're gonna talk about this movie, right? We're yeah, Joey's gonna be wrong. Talk your shit, yeah. Yeah. See, see, Joey says he's my worst. Yeah. But he's actually like he's actually my best friend. Right? Oh. Mainly because I I put him on the night show because I read him right. So basically, I said, look, I'm gonna have these opinions. Yep. This man is definitely gonna he this man is definitely gonna fight back no matter what. Yeah. And but and the real reason why I know this is friction makes fire. Hmm. Right, you yeah. have to in in a talk yeah. show like this. You have to have a heel. It has to work. Yeah. You have to have a person who is going to go against popular opinion. You have to have the Simon Cowell. Sure. You have to. <laughs> yeah, you if everyone's just agreeing, like, that's a fifteen minute show. Exactly right. So he thought he. So I, that's why I let him. Criminal let mastermind. Him yep. yep. I let. That's why on the night show, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm gonna let this man make it, bro, because he he lo he lo he 
the attention that this man brings to the show, right? Yep. He is like you said in the chat. He is the hot take. He is the heel. Yep. Good. He's wrong, but <laughs> I need. But I need it. <laughs> yep. He's he's wrong, but it, it's it's absolutely because, like you said, if if this was a show where everybody agreed, it would be boring. Like yep. nobody wants to so, watch that's this. A, that's a we fine need minute. To, we need we need to have I on the night show. I need to have big personalities clashing clashing with each other. Yep. I yep. need it. I need to have big personalities clashing with each other because that's how we're going to make the best possible product. What helps the show is if people understand what the product is, if people can digest it, if people know what it's about. Like, I chose movies this season mm -hmm. because well, everyone likes movies. It's a very, it's yeah. a very easy right. to do movies this season because we know we um a lot of these actors, we know. But, like, we can come up with interesting conversations of why they're going to be placed in bracket and such, right? See, when I make this, when I make this list tomorrow, Joey thinks he's slick, but this man refuses to see the shit. Uh oh. He re he refuses to see it because he's just like he wants that. I fucking, can get yeah. I can get the, I can get something out of this by roasting banjo for seating. Jesus. <laughs> I can get something out of the banjo by roasting for seating. But I need it. Like I the said, I, I I I I need him to be to be this way, bro. I need him. I so need so and way. and I know I know that you were saying that you're taking like a like you can't just have people on the other hand, right? You can't just have people arguing, 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 and then no decision gets made. They could argue all night with some of these personalities that you bring on, right? So I know you've taken more of a kind of moderator, yeah. kind of like, all right, let's wrap it up. Let's like, what what do we got? What yes. do we got? Yes, yes, and you know, I've also trying to take the the more responsible role of trying to make sure that I give the 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 content to them earlier, right? Because me and Joey actually talked about this today. We said, hey, being prepared for this is actually lit because we can make more meaningful conversation out of this. Right. More entertaining. Better arguments. If we, if, and better arguments instead of slinging, slinging shit at each other, and we can make better arguments out of it. Love right? it. So, and, and it's just like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's not only just Joey, but like, you know, Slaps is there as well. Like during the video game section, Slaps has been like really, really knowledgeable on 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 a lot of this stuff. I'm very happy he's there. And especially him because he's been like pre bracket, a lot of that content he dropped in that channel. Mm. He dropped he dropped in that in that uh in the night show discord. Yeah. A lot of content. It was actually Slaps was the one who would like Look at these internet memes and be like, "Oh, hey, here's this." If he didn't have to work, you know, as long as he didn't have to work, and like, he's been a person who has constantly been there. So Love it. I thank God for slaps too, and I thank God for you know people like Victus, Victus, yeah. Remo, who who used to who used to come through a lot. You know what I'm saying? Help and, out a lot, yeah. You know, everybody, every and everybody who subbed to the channel, man, and. If this I is love gonna it. Be a thing, yeah. And this is this is gonna be a continuing thing for uh. For like you know, forever. I plan the end game. I the end game is to make the once the quarantine is over, once it's safe, the end game is to going to be to uh, make the night show live IRL. Like I don't want to oh. just do this. In, I don't want to just do this in Discord anymore. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I would. I would. So these like, would all be in live if I could. But right now, I don't so want to like take any the, chances. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. So like the first opportunity, it's going to be, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have a, a little bit more space in my room. We're going to have to the right, special guest in front of me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm probably more than likely going to make it uh, a twice a month thing mm -hmm. just because I want to More prep sure time that, and more like fanfare. Yeah, I'll make it. I'll make it a twice a month thing because I at least want to try to get slaps involved and i definitely want to try to get joey involved in some way but that's planning for like you know further down uh the line in 2021 yeah but the content but it's just an evolution right so I the content it. has to eventually eventually get better so i definitely want to make this like irl you know what i'm saying so i love it you can really really talk about and then it'll it'll you know inspire people to like um come through and be a part of it.
because I'm not just going to invite, uh, you know, saying just, you know, the people I know, Big Body Karate Slaps, Joey, and, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people watching are like, I got this hot ass take. Let me put me on this. They are always. It's, always. It, it, it's never ending. They want to get put. They want to be in. And I'm just like, dog, I, I will. If you have something to say and I feel like you're not going to wild out on the show, I'll definitely put you in the show. Right. Right. But there, but like the thing about this, about the night show, like, like when it comes to the evolution of the show, it's just, I know a lot of interesting people. Love it. Yep. Yep. I know, I know people who like, you know, aren't like, just like, I guess, quote unquote normal. I know people who like, have, who do interesting things. Who have right. Interesting things. Right. People who have certain level of, um, people who have their own things going on that you're aware about, at least that, you know, that yeah. they that can help them kind of give some better perspective and experience. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. people who I want to have people who I definitely want to have on the night show IRL in the future are, um, there's a couple of like music, musical artists that I wanted to have on, uh, John Arsto, otherwise known as Bonrin. Okay, Bonrin, uh, yeah, I know Bonrin. Uh, Loke, otherwise known as uh, King Zaddy. Um, I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I want to have. I wanted to talk. I wanted to interview Felix Faction, who is actually an established YouTube streamer. Mm. I mean, YouTube uh, YouTube content creator. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I wanted to have uh, you on the show. I wanted to have Tram on uh, Tram Tram on the show at some point. I wanted yeah. to have um. I wanted to have uh, what's his name? Uh, my friend, um, Kiddo. Well, he used to be Kiddo. His name is uh, his player one. I wanted okay. to have him on the show for sure. Um, I wanted to have what's um, my friend Roy. I wanted to have him on the night. Uh, I have a lot of people, right? Uh, who I want to interview, who I want to get their perspective from, because like the people I know aren't boring. You know they'll be able to bring some entertainment value and make it really entertaining for the people yeah. watching. Yeah. Yep. And like and like like I said, and like my friends are hilarious. Yeah. So like when we put you when when we put you in the room with us, then it's gonna be a fun time. And you know, what I, I did this originally because I wanted to just hang out with my homies, but the evolution of the show will bring me to the world knowing the cool people that I hang out with. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know if you, you knew this, but um, I've literally been talking about how your show um, was a big reason why I finally got off my ass and started doing my own stuff, right? So I, I talk about this a lot. So I, I, I talked about it at least on Krebs and Joey's for sure, and then on other people's streams as well. But like, I've literally mentioned so many times how the 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 how you were just able to say i'm gonna have my friends on and i'm going to do a show here is the date can you make it we're going to do it and just start is yeah, so yeah. powerful and I, I i've talked about this before and i'm gonna keep talking about it i'm gonna talk about it again and now i get to finally actually talk to you about it i've talked to everyone about it except <laughs> you but it was yeah, so yeah. powerful because i've been and we've we mentioned this maybe towards the beginning or before the show but like i had been planning on doing my own shows for so long and i just hadn't started i literally had a list of people who i know were already down to be on a show with me you know yeah. you Krabs, joey my friend who i have confirmed for next week like i've had these people written down and ready to go for like a year or so now and i just never started and so me seeing you start the night show i was like fuck man like this is how easy it is you just start like you just have to start and get the ball going and now look at me now yeah. this is the the fifth one i've done the third one i've done since i've started back up again and made it kind of like official and it's like and i'm and i'm here to tell you that five is gonna turn to 15 fast yeah i mean i already have people five out is, for like a week out and stuff like yeah like five like like it 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 really is about like just being inspired you know to just to just wanting to just do something right like like and that goes back to me like i haven't always been this way like gung ho about shit ever since like ever since like uh I got denied an ultimatum mm. or I didn't get picked for ultimatum excuse me so I say denied I didn't get picked at ultimatum I just had this you know this attitude that like 
if I want to do some shit, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. And that's just and that's just the attitude that like I had to have in order to just make sure that I was succeeding. Like um uh I like I told Joey like at TGL I was like uh we we're we're this is the last time we're gonna do an event and not get paid. Yep. This is the last time. This is the last time. If we're gonna go out and do events, they're gonna give us something yep. for our time. Because our time is valuable. We're not 100%. gonna fly all the way out. We're not gonna go all the way out here and travel, you know, and do this, that, and the other for for nothing. Like the juice has to be worth the squeeze. Like, because you know, we we knew our work, right? Yep. But that's that's a but that's you know a conversation for you know another time. But um like uh like when I decided to do the night show podcast, it's like let's just let's just go through the steps and get it done. Yep. The most important part is that I just have to get up and do it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And that's why and that's kind of like, you know, I was just a wall for like, you know, a l like over a month, a little under a month, just because of like, you know, the problems that I was having physically and mentally. Yeah. But like now that I'm but now that I'm back, like I have plans for this show, you know what I'm saying? And it just, it just, the thing that will motivate you the most is if you have a goal. Mm. Like, I want to be Twitch partnered by the end of the year. Mm. I want to be Twitch partnered by the end of the year. I want to be on the stream team in the next three months, mm. right? And like I said, uh, being motivated, it just, it maybe you just have to set a goal for yourself, right? Yep, yep. But like, if you but if you sit on your ass and do nothing, and play World of Warcraft, <clears throat> and think that you're not gonna do anything, then you won't. But like, if you think that you can do it, then sometimes <clears throat> that's all it takes, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I give a lot of credit to you, man. Like I, I I just remember, and I've said it so many times because I was like, fuck, man, like, oh, like literally, you just have to start and do it, and like, you people people, and so. This is part of the, the founding story for my for my online store, Weep Shirts, is because I, I was kind of in the same rut of like, I picked a, an opening day for the store. And I was like, I'm going to, we're going to open on this day. I have everything ready because if I, if not, I'm just going to keep procrastinating and not doing it and, and being like, oh, I need this before I can start or, oh, I need this. Oh, we need another design or we need another blah, 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 blah. And I just kept coming up with excuses until I was like, finally, we're going to start and pick a day and do it and then i mean it's kind of like what you're saying like if i didn't set that goal of like look this day we're just going to open that's it that's our opening day i'll figure it out from there if i didn't say yeah. the same thing with my podcast like look i'm just gonna i'm just gonna ask someone to see if they want to be on and then we'll pick everything out and figure it out then like it never would have started and so i mean like you said it just starts snowballing snowballing and now i mean look at it now it's like this is like a whole ass production deal like this is a whole thing and like, if you're doing something, just do that shit to the maximum. Mm. Especially now during COVID, like you have, yeah. you, some people have, you know, some people don't, didn't have all the time in the world, but now they kind of do. So it's yeah. just like, hey, bro, and it's just like, bro, if you're putting time into, it, just, just put your best foot forward and act like it's the last time you're gonna be. That's why I, I treated commentary and I treated the night show the way it is, just because like. Like it's a huge like it's it's if I'm gonna do this then I need to give it all of my attention even if it's like for a short period. Of I'm time. correct. Yep. Yeah, because like uh, because like people don't want uh an, an inferior product or people don't want a product where they feel like the content creator isn't isn't trying. So it's just like if you if if the content creator is putting all their all into it then it's at least worth a look. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, but that's, you, yeah. yeah. But if you don't care, how am I supposed to care? Well, right? exactly. Exactly. It's, um, it's, it's, it's so important. And too, like, this is something important to talk on is that like, especially for people, at least in the Twitch sphere, or maybe some people kind of in YouTube is like the fact that we're trying to do these shows that have some thought behind them. In your case, literally like, produced shows like with a date and event and this is the, the the run of the show this is like an actual show as opposed to some of the other content that you might find on twitch where like people just go live i'm just gonna play whatever hang you know blah 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 I, i'm just saying the, the amount of consideration that you put before the stream 
to then the actual stream and then post is so much more like so much more kind of engaging and so much more like I, I find that the shows that I do like the podcast shows that I do on my Twitch channel have like extraordinary amount of views based on whatever normally like whatever normal stuff I'm doing because I put more time and effort and it's an actual like event right so that's just kind of the point i was trying to make is that like these pre-produced shows i think are the wave and is a really important thing to do on twitch because it's something kind of special especially if you try to make it something special every time yep and you got and you know, like you know you have to believe in it you know like you believe in we sh weeb shirts like when you showed that uh shit to me a standoff i was like yeah i was like this is i was like this shit is live bro yeah, yeah, that yeah. and it's just like you gotta, you gotta believe in it, bro. It's not. Don't half-ass it. You know what I'm saying? Like, go all in on it. Like, why not? You know? Exactly. I, you, I on on the on the podcast with Krebs, like, I had brought up this thing where my my sister, my little sister, she helps me with all. I I pay her to help me with a lot of kind of like like clips and social media stuff. And she asked me, she's like, like, why why do you do all this? Like, why do you do all this stuff? Why do you run all these podcasts, run all these streams, do all this YouTube stuff? And I'm like. I really thought about it and it's like what else would I be doing like this is what I find fun like I spent from today when I woke up to like noon or one no breakfast nothing just working on getting all the social media stuff out coordinating with you coordinating with Joey because the YouTube came out getting all the stuff ready making sure you hit the prompt da, 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 da. and that was fun to me like I'm doing it like this is fucking awesome and so it's like what else would I be fucking doing watching the office like come on yeah like um like, I think that it's very important to, like, you know, as, you know, you come into an adulthood that you find, you know, something that, of course, is going to get you financially secure, that's mm -hmm. gonna you, you know, uh, secure as a, as a citizen and things like that, because that's, you know, that's how society works, right? You gotta, yeah, you got to eat. You got to have a job, and you got to eat, right? But then it, it's, like, also a balance of just trying to keep yourself happy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, like, and, like, and I, and leaving... And like that trip to Nevada, I, I learned that, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, that's why I said, like, I need to go ahead and get this degree from school so that way I can be okay financially. And then I can, I can really start pursue all your endeavors. Sure. Yeah. I can really start doing this. Like the only, the, my biggest, my biggest regret in like my life, one of the biggest regrets that I have in life is that I didn't have this mentality when I was like 21. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have this mentality like uh I didn't have this mentality when I was like 17, 18. Like if I if I knew that, you know, hindsight's 2020, of course. But like if I if I knew that this was the route of my life. Mm -hmm. I I could have I could have been, you know what I'm saying, like marshmallow or something. I could have I could have actually decided or or I could have decided to actually just play college football and just keep going or I could have mm -hmm. decided to, you know, uh become a Twitch streamer at 20 at at uh excuse me, become a Twitch streamer at 18 and just keep Twitch streaming or become, you know what I'm saying? Right. But like now that I have like, you know, I'm thankful that I'm this intelligent now to where I've realized that like it's it's never too late. Right. You know I'm saying you can you can you can literally like you know you can do anything you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, like I think being having that job, having a job and just being secure as an adult is important. It's it's super super important. And like if anybody's watching this, I encourage you to like get your shit together as early as you possibly can. So that you can have more fun later on, right? Yeah, because like literally like a lot of like you can you can literally like you getting your shit together at twenty two means that you got at least fifteen years to do whatever you want. Like you like you're like you're out of you you're out of college. You get a job the same year and then you can literally just like you have this you have this many years to like establish your life. Cause I promise you, like it seems like you're not going to be here forever, but I mean, like, I'm here to tell you that, like, it's like what you do definitely matters. So, 
Like getting getting ahead is definitely definitely the move. I promise you. That's it's it's very important. It's very important. I I, I mean, I hope we'll, we'll we'll I'll try to make sure some young people see this, or I'll try we'll try to make sure some people get the message of like, look, I'm sure, especially since some of the audiences that we reach, maybe like through Smash or whatever, are maybe lean younger for some people. Yeah. It's like it's important for them to realize, like, look. You know, and and Joey kind of did the same kind of sign off. He was like, "Look, this is the type of stuff I wish I had been told when I was kind of you know mid to younger twenties to at least kind of get me going." Yeah. And so, I mean, it's 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 important, and I think I think it's important to realize that you're trying to say this from a a, a position of like, "This is how I had to do it. This is what I did." If you're great, you know, if you're lucky enough to be in a position where you could do it sooner. Heed my heed my call, heed my warning. Like, like try to pursue it. Like, really try to pursue it, and then take some of the stuff that we were saying earlier, and just start. Whatever littlest thing, just start and go at it. Because you know, nine dear dear years down the line, of honing some type of craft or doing something that you're really passionate about, you're gonna be amazing. Like, you're gonna be you're gonna be to a point where you can start maybe transitioning out of whatever regular day job into something that you're more passionate about. And that's, 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 that's what we all hope for. And that's what we're all yeah, trying to shoot when, for. When it comes to your passions, bro, it's, it's scary. You know, life is, is going to throw like a lot of curveballs at you for sure. But like, if, if you believe like, you know what I'm saying? If, if you believe, then, and you want to work hard on it, then it can be so. Because there's honestly yep. no difference between there's no difference between me and the next guy, yep. other than one of us wanted it bad. Yep, one hundred percent. One of the, and 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 nobody nobody's a failure. You can everyone can win. Yep, and we're on your side. Everybody, we're all on your side. We're yeah. all on your side, bro. Like nobody nobody is a failure, bro. You can you can win just like I can win, right? And, you know, like, don't be in, in just like, don't be, don't be scared and don't be afraid to like take risks and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're being human is allow is being allowed, you know what I'm saying? To, or allowing yourself to make mistakes. So that way you can, you can figure out what's work, what works. A lot of people are controlled by, you know what I'm saying? This perception of yourself. Yeah. It's just like a lot of fear. Yeah, and it's just like if you're if you're taught to do nothing, then you won't. But like you can you you can do anything. You can. It's just life is a six inch game. So, you know, it's it's sometimes it's it's actually just all in your head, which is something that I learned. And if you think that you can, you know, be the best commentator or you know a, a, a the one of the best content creators then if you work at it it can it can be so it can be you know what i'm saying i just don't want people that like you know what i'm saying have this perception of themselves to where they're like limited and it's it's, right. it's not the case you know what i'm saying you can you can do anything you yeah, can. shoot for it because it'll be more fun shooting for and failing than not I can guarantee you trying for something and not achieving it and then learning along the way and doing it will be more satisfying than sitting your ass on the couch. Yeah, I, I big time agree on that. Big time. Love it. Love it. Um, well, I, is, is there, I think we're about ready to close it out. We're going we're gonna to stay on just in case anyone else in the chat has any other things to add. But um, is there anything that you kind of want to close us out on? Any prayers, any hymns, anything you want to leave us with? Uh, well, um, I will start by saying that um, if you're racist, go fuck yourself. Amen. Uh, but also, um, make sure you guys uh, check out my stream. The night show is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, DJ something something is 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 also happening this Saturday. Just call yourself well, Hollywood I'm, Banjo. I'm leaning towards it, not leaning towards it. I, I actually am leaning towards it to be honest with you. Hollywood Banjo. But like um yeah, uh DJ Hollywood Banjo is actually this Saturday as well from 12 to 2. I'm going to be doing one hour of just spinning some hits and then the other hour will be the run the jewels uh the run the jewels set because uh you know fuck a racist 
Love it. Um, and yeah, you can definitely uh, keep expecting content from the night show. Mm-hmm. Um, me as well uh, on normal days. The schedule, I definitely need to you know work out on the weekdays. But you're definitely going to be seeing just more and more consistent content from me for the for the rest of the year and out. And uh, also, um, I'm going to start posting stuff on YouTube. Love it. It's Love necessary. it. It's necessary. It needs to happen. I need to find Love an it. editor so I can start posting, so I can post these uh these next two episodes so of uh, The Night Show. So, yeah, uh, a lot of fun stuff uh, coming, uh, coming everyone's way. And, uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope everybody can enjoy it. I hope everybody can learn to love each other, especially after today. You know what I'm saying, and yeah, man, this is. I'm really, I'm really happy to to been on this podcast because it just allowed me to just like, man, just allowed, cut it out you know, there. I, yeah, I, I had to, man. I had. To, I feel like the. I had to talk to somebody about this. So. Hey, man, I'm here. I'm always here to listen. I'm always very glad to have you on. I will not stop talking about how your show really inspired me to just get off my ass and stop playing WoW and do something. Um, uh-huh. more shows to come. Very glad to know you. I will, you know, I invite everyone. Make sure you drop a follow. Make sure you check out his streams. Uh, night show tomorrow. Night show. We said you said Saturday or Sunday for the DJ set. Uh, the DJ. The DJ showcase is this Saturday from twelve to two. Okay. And uh, and um, uh, the night show is tomorrow at nine p.m. Nine p.m. Love it. Love it. Banjo at Banjo plays Banjo, a.k.a. Hollywood Banjo, a.k.a. T, a.k.a. my good friend. And we're out. I appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Boom. Okay, done. YouTube video, done. Love it. Done, baby. Love it. All right. I got to go pee really bad. I had like oh, 15 drinks. Same, dude. I yeah. Oh, man. All right. We'll be back. We'll be back. City dish, you know the five